Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content which may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. All right, y'all. We are going back to our roots with a Midwest 2020 mini tour. Oh, oh, I can't wait. Thank goodness. Corn fed entertainment. Tater tot hot dish. Mm, hot dish 2020. We are going to be in Indianapolis on March 18th, Chicago on the 19th, and the Twin Cities, a.k.a. Minneapolis, St. Paul. Ever heard of it? On Saturday, March 21st. Got some more dates. Amanda, what else do we have? From there, we're going to be going to St. Louis on March 23rd and Kansas City, Missouri, Trump, (laughs) on March 24th. Tickets can be found at our website, wineandcrimepodcast.com. So keep your eye out, get those trigger fingers ready, Mm -hmm. and buy them before they sell out, baby. Yes, please. We can't wait to see you all. See you in March. Wine and Crime, the podcast where three friends chug wine, chat true crime, and unleash their worst Minnesota accents. I'm Kenyon. I'm Lucy. And I'm Amanda. This week's topic is peeping Tom's fucking (laughs) dick. Oh, God. Or peeping Tina's. Uh, (laughs) Oh, I don't have a peeping Tina. I wish I had one. Neither do I, because most women are not horrible monsters. Yeah. Oh, I also yeah. have never been more ashamed of my search history in my entire life. <laughs> like Even I, more than necrophilia? Way more. This is to me somehow way worse because like at least for necrophilia they're already dead. <laughs> yeah. There's like, like well, something so- comforting about knowing they're already dead before they get violated. That's the hopefully. worst part. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. For me, I mean, I don't care when I'm gone. Have There's- at it. <laughs> There is something about peeping toms that oh. freaks me the fuck out. It's like, so it's, gross. It's like a top three mm. fear. Mm-hmm. Can I just say? I don't. Can I just say yeah. that I'm undergoing some house renovations right now, and oh, no. we had to replace all the windows on our main floor, the ground floor. No. No. And you know, yeah. there are several steps to replacing your windows. The last of mm-hmm. which is putting up blinds. So, currently, oh, yeah. uh, I have no blinds on my ground floor. Oh, no. Uh, I don't, I don't like even that. like my partner seeing me having sex. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's, not, is... it's not even just about the having sex. It's like. Changing. Just the watching. Just being Existing observed. without pants on in my apartment because that's just how I live my life. Pantsless. It's not like for me. It's like not even about the modesty or being pantsless. Like mm-hmm. I could give a shit. Like I once popped a squat once more than once. Yeah, I was gonna say wait. A squat <laughs> <laughs> right in the middle of uh, an outdoor concert, like yeah. in the middle of the crowd, <laughs> and yeah. just pissed right there. Yeah, because I just could not bear waiting in line at the porta potties. Like We've all been there. I don't care. We've really I went all been there. to a lot of events with you in college. I remember. <laughs> I've seen your vagina so many times yeah. I could draw it in intimate detail. <laughs> I won't. I choose Follow not us to. On Twitter yeah. for that. So that'll be bonus content on the next blog. next Instagram post. <laughs> A crude rendering of Kenyon's vagina. It's a charcoal drawing. <laughs> I'm not That's a good a- artist. That's a new reward tier level on Patreon. <laughs> yeah, you gotta pay good money for that, though. That's like a $500 donation. It's gonna be an intricate sketch. <laughs> <laughs> Detailed. <laughs> Amanda, what have you chosen to pair with this crime? Well, um, again... My search history is garbage right now. I literally Googled peeping Tom wine question <laughs> mark. <laughs> Zero results. <laughs> so I had to get a little more creative. I searched secret wine. I searched like peeping wine, all kinds of things. <laughs> and then thought I'm going at this the wrong way. 
So yeah. I settled on, and by settled I mean chose, I never settle, <laughs> a wine called Proposed The Dan. Naked Grape. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> this wine is called The Naked Grape, and I figure most peeping Toms, even in peeps of opportunity, are usually trying to see something. So mm. a wine with naked in the title felt fitting. Um, the Naked Grape produces a high-class variety of boxed wine, mm. so I don't have to open shit today. I just have to turn a little valve, and <laughs> I'm turn full that up. Knob and I have that sweet I'm, nectar. Yeah. Not going to drink the whole box, because I would die. Um, <laughs> Amateur. But I also, I, I also chose a Merlot to go with this. Mm. I figured this is kind of like a mellow, soft, and readily available grape variety, and the other selections that they had were not looking like I'd get through it without vomiting. So it's also here a, we are. It's also a Merlot class or Merlot level felony. <laughs> yes, it is a low level felony. Okay, I'll keep that. I like that. Um, so a little information about Merlot. It is a very dark grape variety, so when you pour Merlot, it's going to look, it's super opaque, it's like almost blackish red. Um, it is used commonly as a blending grape as well as on its own. It has a softness and a fleshiness that makes mm. for a pop popular grape in blends because it really mellows out the flavors, it has a nice sweetness to it. So you'll find a lot of Cabernet Merlot blends. Cabernet tends to be a little bit more sharp. It can have a little bit more earthiness to it. If you want to have a softer mouthfeel with a little bit more fruity tone, you can see that that's going to be blended oftentimes with Merlot. Um, it is the most widely planted grape in the Bordeaux region of France and one of the most popular red wine varietals in the world. So this is the third most grown variety globally. It um, sits right behind Cabernet, and I believe the first is Chardonnay, as we discussed last week. Yeah. Um, and this particular Merlot is going to give rich um, aromas and flavors of dark cherry and caramel. So it falls kind of in the middle of the road on that sort of sweet, savory, with kind of a less dry finish than we typically choose, but it's still a really nice, just kind of mellow table wine. I'm enjoying it. Mm. I don't hate it. This is Delish. nothing I'm, like last week. Better than Chardonnay. I love Merlot, mm -hmm. and I love good red blends. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so interesting that that's part of it, because I love them both. Awesome. There, there you go. Now you know why. Yeah. So, everybody, oh. turn your knobs and fill a glass with naked <laughs> grape Merlot. <laughs> knobs meaning on the box, not on your crotch. <laughs> hey, cool. whatever floats your boat. We're not here to judge. Yeah. If, we're not in the same room. If you're not a you. peeping tom, turn yeah. your knob. Yeah, go ahead. And if you're turning your knobs to our podcast, honestly, I'd be flattered. Mm hmm. <laughs> Maybe just don't do it in front of me. <laughs> Keep that behind closed doors. I've if been masturbated to a knob. In the privacy of your own home, <laughs> go get it. If in you're a non threatening way. If you're outside my dining room window right now, turning your knob, uh -huh. that's not okay. Yeah. It's also Boy, still light outside, so get a life. <laughs> go home have a glass of wine or two wait for the sun to go down then come out and then, look at my window then come back <laughs> do it like it's a normal person three in the afternoon and you're wearing all black standing outside <laughs> my bedroom window you are so. hiding <laughs> you're we really can bad at see this. you you're <laughs> looking for your dog oh, god. oh my god three of my guys have used that in this in my stories anyway yep Classic. Oh, oh, well, that's perfect. Let's get started, then, with a little bit of history yep. of peeping, peeping in people's windows. Peeping and... Peeping peeps. <laughs> peeping and creeping. Peeping and creeping. All right. So, uh, I'd like to start with... I found a, some kind of excerpt or a quote from an actual voyeur, which is a nicer way of saying creepy-ass peeping Tom. Yeah, it's just a French peeping Tom. Mm hmm Okay, so I've, <laughs> I've got an excerpt or a quote, and I'm going to read this as creepily as I can, because it's really fucking creepy. Okay, get in, <laughs> get in the character. <clears throat> I'm pouring more wine. I, know, I already burped wine. and stuff came up. I only, I always like puke a little when I burp. If there's a doctor <laughs> listening, if I need to go to a hospital... Isn't, tweet at us. Isn't burping just kind of like an airy barf? It's... Oh, okay. This is a whole other episode. 
That's our next topic. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I boarded the train at my station and sat down. <laughs> I can't. Sorry. I'm already losing it. <laughs> okay, Keep going. Sorry. Opposite me, there was a beautiful pair of legs encased in silvery stockings. I followed the legs upward and caught the eye of their owner, a slightly plump, very attractive blonde. I was a... Oh, shit. <laughs> It's Kenyon. <laughs> Not every attractive blonde is you, Kenyon. I said, oh shit, at plump. <laughs> oh, okay. There was a delay. <laughs> oh, fair, fair. I was obsessed by those legs. I peeped again and saw how her legs were now crossed high in the thigh. I could see the long curve of the underside of her thigh. I was beginning to get an erection, but could not look away. <laughs> She wiggled in her Ugh. seat a bit, and then, as if she was uncomfortable, uncrossed and Ugh. recrossed her legs, giving me a glimpse of her crotch. I hate Fuck. this. I don't know why I do it, <laughs> but it's a part of me I can't let go. I don't think I'd ever take it further, though. I just like to watch, you know? I've always been a mm -hmm. voyeur, and always will be. And mm. and Are you sure... Are you sure there's, those weren't just stage notes from Fatal Attraction? Probably. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the definition of Peeping Tom, a.k.a. voyeurism, um, according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, um, defined as a paraphilia, which is basically just weird sexual preferences, a paraphilia yeah. that focuses on observing unsuspecting individuals, usually strangers, who are naked in the process of disrobing or engaging in sexual activity. The act okay. of looking or peeping for the purposes of achieving sexual excitement uh, and generally no sexual activity with the observed person is sought. Well, that's a badly written sentence. So they're not <laughs> trying to have sex with the person they're watching. They're just getting their jollies by watching that person. Exactly. It is yeah. said that okay. the high is in the risk of looking and not the actual seeing. It always yeah, because, is. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, you could just look at porn and see a whole lot more, but well, to see yeah, but there's no risk. Lives. We'll get to that. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, the last part of the definition is orgasm via self pleasuring may occur during or following the activity, so they could save it up for their spank bank, do it later. Ah, yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. This Whoa. is my favorite part of this. Uh, Ninety percent of men. Or 90% of peeping toms are men with high mm -hmm. IQs in general. They have high IQs. But the remaining 10% really? that are female are usually severely mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's either so incredibly the, smart no. men or completely <laughs> out of their gourd women. <laughs> that's the equivalent. <laughs> incredibly <laughs> smart men equal. Yeah. <laughs> incredibly... I can't Severely say Severely mentally <laughs> ill women. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's there. Women. It's there in the numbers. Dem it's, cards don't yeah. lie. It's facts, folks. It's research. <gasps> also, I just want to call bullshit on this whole, like, high IQ thing. Mm -hmm. Because for literally every single one of our episodes, the profile has included high IQ well, individuals. Well, didn't, didn't the profile specifically not in necessarily include high IQ with necrophilia? They said there was no link. Yeah, there was no link. Like it, but all the oh, other okay. ones. But arsonists and serial yeah. killers and... Well, they God have all that pent-up creative energy. <laughs> Gotta figure out some way to, <laughs> to spend it. Mm. Okay. They're all frustrated virgins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Continue. Okay, so some of the reasons behind people starting this behavior, they think... And research is really hard to do because, by nature, voyeurism is all about secrecy and not getting caught. Right. So it's really hard to gather stats on this. Mm -hmm. mm. But they think that it could be some kind of revenge for being humiliated in childhood or, like, a retaliation for some kind of childhood sexual abuse. Uh. Um, mm. It could be, uh, they call it displacement paraphilia, where in the observation is kind of preparatory erotic play which is basically like pre foreplay and then it just right. never mm. really goes anywhere from there okay so it's just like right. you were saying before they don't 
try to engage with these people. <laughs> they just kind of get stuck in this gross, like, limbo until they jack off and move on to their next spot. Kind yeah. of. Next bush. So in I... more ways than one. <laughs> 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 I have... <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. It took a it's second. It's funny. I usually say that's not funny, but that one was that funny. That one was funny. I'll give you that. It was funny. <laughs> I was totally tuned out. Yeah, you usually are when <laughs> I talk. It's fine. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so the researchers have kind of discovered that voyeurs are often paired up with people who are actually exhibitionists. So both of these are sort Paired of up. subtle kind of... You mean like in relationships? Yeah, like in relationships. Like oh, a lot okay. of couples will go to counseling because like, let's say the husband was caught peeping on the neighbor. So they'll go to counseling and then a lot of times it'll turn out that the wife is actually into exhibitionism. So it's uh, kind of weird. Woof. These are just naturally... Or does she tr- become into it? No, well, no, like they're what saying I, they're paired awesome. up with people who are who lean toward these like sexual preferences, and all, it's all mm. subconscious. Like, mm. the, maybe there's the, somebody out there for everyone. This yeah. gives me hope for right. me and Dan. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> propose <laughs> Dan. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> so the origin of the phrase "peeping Tom" comes. It dates back to. Like the 11th century England. Wow. Where okay. a gentleman named Leofric III imposed a tax on the town people, and nobody liked it, including his own wife, whose name was Lady Godiva. So, in protest for this tax, Lady Godiva rode naked on a horse through the streets of their town of Coventry to protest the tax. And. Mm. Makes perfect sense. Okay. I know. I'm not really sure what her strategy was, but whatever. So either she requested this or just out of respect, unclear, all of the townspeople shuttered their windows just so they wouldn't see her naked and it would just kind of lessen her embarrassment, which again, what's the point of riding naked? Whatever. There was a tailor named Tom who drilled a hole Mm. in his shutters so that he could peep on Lady Godiva. And legend fucking has it, Tom, <laughs> fucking Tom, he was either struck blind or dead upon seeing her. Obviously, mm-hmm. serves him right. This is obviously not true, but some kind of tale that has to do with like a chocolate lady. That's the, the <laughs> lore. <laughs> I love that the chocolate lady was somehow involved in coining the term for peeping Tom. In my mind, the chocolate lady and some nakedness on horses. Yeah. <laughs> I've also gotten conflicting information whether peeping peeping toms, PTs are mm-hmm. interested exclusively in watching people who are like undressing or having sex because a lot of like we said it's it's really the risk of getting caught. So it's right. not necessarily always sexual. Sometimes they just mm-hmm. are like kind of spying on people. Mm-hmm. Mm. So their appearance okay. may be irrelevant. This behavior usually begins around age 15. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Formative mm-hmm. years. Formative years. Yeah. But really, that's when all bad behavior kind of starts. So uh, although the peeping Tom may fantasize about an encounter, it's unlikely. It's all about fantasy versus reality. And I okay. also got conflicting information about how often this escalates into an actual encounter and then possibly sure. a rape situation. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what I read was if the victim sees them being watched, then it's more likely that the, the PT will panic and try to like... And run off. Or just try to be like, no, it's okay. And then there's like some kind of physical encounter and then he already has a boner and he's like, well, fuck it. I might as well rape her. I feel oh like shit, that's less likely than just running away or saying, I'm looking for my dog, or mm-hmm. I was taking a shortcut through your backyard, which are typical excuses. Right. Uh, so, anyway, yeah. it's possible. All right. Okay, but you didn't find any, like, stats because it's so hard to get numbers Right, on there were really no dogs. numbers. The only numbers I found was that 90% male, <laughs> duh. I'm actually shocked sure. it's not higher. <laughs> okay, so as far as legality, legally speaking... 
Uh, voyeurism technically is illegal, but arrest levels are low because it's so hard to prove. The behavior is secretive. But yeah, it's just, it's hard to prove. So there are there are some laws that are on the books that are intended to pro, you know punish peeping toms, but it's still kind of sure. broad. So it's such a they call it a casual crime because it's so easy to play off as something else. Right. Um, related crimes are yeah. suspicion of burglary, invasion mm. invasion of privacy. And that applies to public places. This also isn't super well defined, but anywhere that you'd expect privacy, like a public bathroom, a dressing room, um, mm-hmm. a tanning booth, things like that. If there is oh, a reasonable shit. level okay, yeah. of expected privacy, then that is you'd be considered an invasion of privacy. I'm so glad that you are mm. going over that because in my segment, we will be discussing that. I know. I can't wait. Yeah. It's fucked what some states will let you get away with. Uh, Yeah, Yeah. like such as New York State. Uh, They they require some kind of recording to take place in order to prosecute this. So, like, a video camera would prove hostile intent. So Mm -hmm. So you can't just catch someone in the act of watching you. They have to have also been recording you. In New York, yeah. And probably other states. In a... In a public place, though, if they're on your property, well, if they're I on your property, it would be trespassing, you know, trespassing. or any other number of, of charges you could bring down. Right, but you like could get them on mm-hmm. other charges. Yeah, I read a lot about okay. use of mirrors, <clears throat> also, and that's also Ugh. debatable and disgusting. Yep, yep. upskirting, upskirting, God. totally upskirting. It's fucked up. Mm-hmm. But it's not illegal mm-hmm. in in every. In every place, such as New York. Yep. Mike, one of my guys, it was for indecent exposure because he was masturbating uh-huh. on the scene. Yep, that'll do it. That'll do it. So some okay. loopholes if right. you are caught peeping. If you weren't on private property, it doesn't count. If you had a reason okay. to be on private property, it doesn't count. If you weren't recording Ugh. anything, if you weren't loitering, or if the building wasn't inhabited. Those are ways that your public defense lawyer could get you off. Jesus Christ. Jesus. So if I decide to have right. sex in, like, an abandoned house and somebody comes up and starts watching me, they're not breaking the law because I'm trespassing in that abandoned house anyway. Yep. Yep. Talk about victim-blaming Angelina <laughs> over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that scene in The Notebook. Okay, so one thing I wanted to point out when you we were talking oh. about pornography, this was a quote from the Chesterfield Observer in Virginia. Oh. The quote is, in today's world, voyeurism has gone digital. Hidden cameras in bathrooms, cameras on shoes to upskirt women, software to remotely control the webcam of someone's personal computer after it's been hacked, etc. Okay, that is terrifying. And my mom found out about this, and she's not terribly tech savvy. She doesn't know the difference. But But I don't have an Uber phone. (laughs) <laughs> I can't use Uber. I don't have an Uber phone. Direct that's, quote. That's an actual quote oh, from last quote. year. Less than 12 months ago. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but she heard about that webcam hacking thing, and so now she has a piece of cardboard Dude, over her webcam. Dude, there are famous photos of Mark Zuckerberg sitting at his computer with tape over his camera. Yeah, it's definitely it's a real in thing. all yeah. the Facebook bylines that they can access that shit whenever they want to. But also a post-it It's works. also in all the fine print in, like, every app, every phone you buy. It's mm-hmm. all in the fine print. They it's don't necessarily sure do it, but they're allowed to do it. Mm-hmm. Laptops should come with, like, little eyelids. Well, whatever. Joke's on you guys. I pretty much exclusively use technology when I'm pooping, so enjoy that. I know, right? (laughs) (laughs) Now at it. You're on the toilet right now, aren't you? Probably. How would you know? (laughs) Probably. (laughs) Um, So just just to finish up this quote, it ends with, Like dirty telephone calls, which are now passe due to caller ID... The advent mm-hmm. of technology has really reduced the frequency of these experimental and opportunistic voyeur offenders. So, like that you said, sense. you could just go well, home and watch porn. You're absolutely right. That's why there aren't that many peeping toms anymore. Mm-hmm. However, oh, okay, All there right. is one, and I heard about him last night from my bartender, oh, who's a friend of mine. Oh, no. Shout out Nick <laughs> Bell. So, he grew up in a town of 500 people called Runnels, Iowa. Mm -hmm. And he had an older sister, and there was a neighbor boy named Billy, 
who they were around oh, like it's always uh, Billy. Billies uh, are fucking perverts all the time. Oh, so God. anyway, this this Billy okay. rode the bus with Nick, and he offered him twenty dollars to let him into his house while his sister was in the shower to watch her. Woof. <gasps> so this Billy. Okay. This you went for it, right? Got that money. Make that paper. That's Side what hustle. I asked. He's like, um, no. I punched him in the face. Um, okay, good brother. That was a test. You passed. I don't think he really did. But anyway, he told all of the other neighbors to be like, this kid's a fucking pervert. Watch out. So in the end, this Billy character was caught by multiple neighbors and was arrested several times for trespassing. Well, good. They kept their eye on him. Fuck. Yeah. That's crazy. Ugh. I feel like it crosses, I mean, not that regular peeping tomming is good, but I feel like it crosses a line when you actually enter the property. Yeah. Like, I was looking up some cases that I chose not to include because it was people that were like, Breaking through windows and going into people's yeah. rooms, like taking bedrooms. it way it's beyond. Like, no, that's breaking and entering. Bra- that's not yeah. exactly like that's not peeping toms anymore. No. That's fucking attempted no, that, rape. Yeah, that's beyond what what we're going for here. <clears throat> ditto, yeah. ditto Viola, with Viola. stalking. Yeah. Like, where does yeah. where does peeping tom peeping end and <laughs> stalking begin? Because they're right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's very yeah. blurry. It's blurry, yeah. but I, I would assume that stalking is fixating on a specific victim. And peeping toms, it's, again, from any of the research that I've done, it's a lot of times crime of opportunity. You know, somebody with yeah. a shade up, Just somebody randos. with a first floor bedroom window. They're not necessarily repeat offenders yeah. in the same place every time, although they probably Actually, know the people in their neighborhood that are they, getting changed. They kind of are, depending on the community. If they know mm-hmm. that a person has a ground floor bedroom and they don't always close sure. their curtains or whatever, they will continue to go back to that spot. Sure. But they're not following yeah, them to work like, or the bookmarks. grocery store or the gas station. Right. I think that's kind yeah. of where you're seeing yeah. that change okay. from, I'm, I know that you fucking put your nighty on at 6.30 p.m. every day in this room, so I'm going to come take a peek at that. And ask but you I'm why you're still wearing you a nighty, <laughs> and just be like, my dog is really naughty and keeps getting lost in your yard every day around this time. I'm so sorry. Uh, every time I get an erection, my dog. <laughs> it's so <laughs> weird. It's so weird. <laughs> okay. It's like a Pavlovian response. Oh I get really turned on when I learn my dog ran away. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> just a couple tips for avoiding these PTs. Um, Close your blinds. Done. Well, and also leave your yeah. leave your outside lights on, which I also don't currently have hooked up at my house, so I'm real susceptible to peeping toms. Sure. At this Can very we also moment. have you include your address because you've given away a lot of really good information about the like <laughs> vulnerability of your home. I so. live in Saskatchewan. No. <laughs> um, uh. Keep keep big dog toys and like a large water bowl in plain sight so that they might think that you have a dog who will bark if the dog sees you. Oh. Yes. Um, also, if you do see one and you have to call the cops, tell them that it's a prowler and not a peeping tom because they are more likely to come if they think that it's like a like a crime about to be committed. They don't care about peeping tom. It's seen as a victimless crime. Fucking patriarchy. Exactly. Yeah, that's bullshit. It is not a victimless crime, uh, but that's kind of how they see it because their time no, is so it's a fucking, fucking sex precious. Crime. Like it's disgusting. God fucking I damn it! Anything. All right, just a couple it's helpful hell, tips. Also, I just want to note that I recently installed a fake uh, surveillance camera, so it doesn't actually like do anything. <laughs> right. It looks like a surveillance camera. Like every camera in every bar in America. <laughs> It hasn't much. worked since yeah. 1981, but they just keep it there anyway. <laughs> yeah, so I have one of those, and I have a motion sensor mm-hmm. light, which I feel like is maybe good. I'm on my third glass of wine. Oh, my, oh my God. God. So. I'm on my That's first. Jealous. What's wrong with me? Catch up. Oh, God. At this yeah. rate, I might go through that box. Okay. And I have a caucus training at 7.30, so sorry about that. Sorry Maybe about government. that. I love caucusing. I'm gonna be so helpful. I know I'm gonna learn how get involved and then not remember any of it. <laughs> okay, I am going to tell two little uh, peeping tom 
ditties, <laughs> neither of which are Little true Little ditty about Jack and Diane. <laughs> two beefing toms <laughs> living in the heartland. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, life goes out. Long, Long after, after the, the thread. thread. It's fucking John Cougar Mellencamp. Of peeping is gone. <laughs> Sucking on chili dogs. <laughs> Sucking on chili dogs. <laughs> That's a real lyric. I, I didn't know. make that part up. But you're so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> we have to keep going. That has to stay in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Suck it out, chill it out. Suck it out, chill it out. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. We'll keep okay. it. We'll keep it. <laughs> okay. So, but first, I want to tell you guys about um, this Reddit Ask Me Anything or AMA. It's my favorite that I website. Came during... I read Reddit every night <laughs> oh before God. I go to bed. Do you know how fucking hard it was to not read this AMA because you said we couldn't? Because you had, quote, <laughs> called it? I did. I called you it. You selfish bitch. I actually bitch. don't understand Reddit that oh, much. Oh, you're not but, even like, deserving. Every once in a while. I don't I get know, it either. I'm sorry. Ugh, both of you. I don't really get All it. Alright, well, listeners, My fiance clearly gets it. I anyway. am the superior okay. host. So, <clears throat> this <coughs> research will possibly haunt your dreams just because the guy is, like, so nonchalant. So, wait. He's so a peeping Tom, and he's he has an anonymous account opening up the conversation for other users to ask him anything. Correct? Exactly. Okay, cool. Correct. All right. Yes, so this guy is a self-confessed peeping Tom, and he decided to be like, hey, ask me anything, I will answer. Oh, he's gonna be good. Okay, so he starts out strong. He gives, like, a little bio of himself before he opens it up to questions. Wow, so he's, so, like, proud. Yeah, yeah. That's fucked up. So he, this is a quote. It all began August 20th, <laughs> 2006. Oh. It was like... It was the worst of times. It was the best of times. My mom really pissed me off this morning. I can't believe she made me come down for breakfast. Dear Journal, today I became a peeping Tom. I had been out drinking with a few of my buds at a party when I saw this absolute babe walking home. No. The sort of girl you could bring home to your mama. Nope. Nope. Mm-mm. Nope. I don't like that. Uh-uh. uh-uh. No. I hate him already. Asked, Here we go. Yeah, he's... No, just wait. I asked her if she wanted to come back home with me. She was not interested at all and threatened to call the cops if I didn't leave her yeah. alone. So he didn't so, just ask her if she wanted to exactly. come back home Exactly. Fuck yeah, that. he's clearly a massive fucking pervert because mm-hmm. nobody threatens to call the cops if you're like normal hitting on them. Right. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. So God knows what he said or what his move was. I don't Ugh. know. I threaten to call the cops at out. almost every interaction that I have. So <laughs> <laughs> that's because you're the just an uptight bitch who can't take a compliment. <laughs> Said every guy on the street downtown. There's a prowler following me. (laughs) Oh my god. He goes on. I drunkenly decided it was a good idea to make sure she got home safe. Oh yeah, you're a real hero. Ooh, Batman over here. Same sentence. Yeah, same fucking sentence. So I stayed behind trying to hide. (laughs) Great. Good Samaritan. Yeah. He's, yeah. 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 Oh, my God. That, okay, she then got to the door and started peeling off her clothes, and I was too drunk to give up. Wait, outside? No, she, like, he follows her home. She got inside. She's in her, okay. She's in her home, I presume, and then he's too drunk to look away. Okay. Oh. At this point, he finds a nice little bush by a window <laughs> and decides to see if he could get a good old view of her. <laughs> I hope this I man this gets man's... murdered. I know. I Sorry about it. So much. Okay. That's how his predilection for peeping Tomery began. But get this. 
he claims that he was almost caught once, not by the cops, but by another peeping Tom. <laughs> what? <laughs> Spying on... They had a turf <laughs> war yes. over who could peep. But they were actually, they were very friendly to one another. Hey, of course they were. Hey, this is my oh, bush. Oh, bro, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, bro. Were you with this bush first? <laughs> yeah, bro. Oh, that's yeah. cool. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Yeah. Fair enough. You. You. So they're spying on an old woman and oh. they see each other. And then the second peeping Tom introduces the first one to a, quote, group of guys and even a couple women who turned it into a game and challenge to see who could get the best view and not get caught. Of the same woman they're peeping on? No, of anyone. So they have, like, a peeping Tom club. What? I wonder if they have conventions. Were the women severely know. mentally ill? Probably, he doesn't say. Statistically, yeah, probably. Yeah. How did they prove yeah. how good of a view they got? Is this where the photos come in? Pictures. It's subjective. Yeah, I think it's, he says best view or picture. Oh, but, my and God. And he also, he also talks at one point about how they, like, met during the day and would go on, like, walks in the park to, like, no. talk about their... I was gonna like their trophies, kind of like their like conquests. Mm. That's the Ugh, word. yikes! Ugh. That's disgusting. It's a knitting yeah. circle. Yeah, <laughs> it's Love. fucking terrifying. Okay, Ick. so beyond that, most of the questions that the redditors were asking were were seriously <laughs> lacking in rigor and intellectual curiosity, in my yeah. opinion. Um, unfortunately, because sometimes they're really interesting, but this yeah. one was, like, pretty terrible. But, so the first, <laughs> the very first question, which I think is just perfect and sums it up, is, quote, the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> 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 yep. Which is like, yep, yeah, got it. Can you okay. What did he say? Can he what was yet? wrong with him? <laughs> he didn't answer every question, because he's... A douchebag. I hate him. Rude. Okay. Did he say so whether he are... twisted his knob to these women? I think I think he said that he waited till later. Mm. Spank bank. He spank banked it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, there were a lot of fuck yous. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of. Um, there was like a long discussion about whether or not a therapist would have to turn him into the police if he sure. sought therapy. There were a lot of entirely warranted, like, stop before this escalates and you rape someone. Yeah. Yep. Um, or, like, stop before you get shot because I would totally fucking shoot you. Uh, that was yep. another popular one. Mm -hmm. um, and then there were, like, a few, like, really just heart-wrenching stories from people who had been stalked by a peeping Tom over the span of years. Yeah. No, it's um, nuts. And like you were saying before, they're so hard to catch, like... This is not somebody that I mentioned, but someone who came up in my research was somebody who's just recently arrested in Minnesota, in St. Paul, and this person had been peeping for over 25 years, and had been sort of yeah. in and out of jail, but, like, they can't pin down any legit charges, and they're not being forced to go into any kind of therapy. Like, yeah. there are those options, but a lot of them just choose to take their jail time and then move on. Mm-hmm. Ugh. It's fucking God. crazy. So it's really hard to re rehabilitate these people because they have to be willing to actually do the work. There's that, and then there's also like one of the one of the treatment options was hormone therapy to mm -hmm. like adjust your you know whatever your sexual drive hormones are, which can't be Ugh. cheap. It's not like and they had like group therapy, but there's no answer. You just have to fucking stop doing that. Yeah. Also, I feel like these people. Like justify or attempt to justify their own behavior, and they think that because they're not actually touching or assaulting someone, right? That, that it's, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not fucking harmless. It's not. Yeah. It's not. So this this guy in on Reddit actually describes himself as quote harmless and quote a socially awkward penguin. Yeah, that's a meme. You are not the socially awkward penguin. The socially awkward penguin is cute and sweet. And very actually <laughs> harmless. You're a fucking criminal. How dare you? How dare you associate yeah. yourself with the socially awkward penguin? I will not stand for it. 
Which I one will is not, not know that anyway. that was a meme, and I have to watch. I have to see it. Don't worry, I viewers. Was... I will make sure a socially awkward penguin meme goes on the blog, so that our lovely yeah. co-host Kenny and Lucy will know what the fuck mm. this creeper <laughs> pervert is talking about. Yeah, how he sees himself. What he's so anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Those were the gems from the Reddit AMA. So nothing really too enlightening, but it was just kind of interesting hearing the perspective of someone. So um, my next case, very short, just kind of <laughs> honestly funny. Um, so again, I found people with fucking Russian ass names. I don't know what the fuck is wrong <laughs> with me. Always do. I think they're actually Americans with Russian names. So obviously, same diff sleeper cell. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, this we're gonna lose our entire can, Russian fan base. This is why we need extreme vetting. <laughs> oh my god! Keep those pervs uh, in Russia. I would support extreme vetting of Russians, but not <laughs> the Sudanese and Somali. And, They're all yeah, necrophiles peppers. and peeping towns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Edward. Edward Petrovich Kovnev and nice his work. brother. <laughs> His brother, who's only one year older, also Edward <laughs> Alexander Kovniev. <laughs> Irish twins! Irish-Russian yeah. twins. Yeah. Okay, so these two had a lot in common. Uh, they had a habit of spying on women using the toilets at the local uh, Value <clears throat> Mart cinema in Duluth. What? Mm. Mm-hmm. Georgia. Oh. Oh, you bitch. You bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Not cool. Such a cock tease. I know. Rude. Duluth, Georgia. What the fuck? Okay. Also, so, uh, Minnesota called. They want their town name back. For yeah, real. Georgia. You can't, you can't even pronounce it right, Georgia. And don't Give worry, Georgia back. sucks. I'm about to talk about it in my next segment, so continue. Mm. Okay. So... These two uh, had a habit of spying on women using the toilets in this uh, movie theater. It was believed that they crawled through. This is like a regular hobby for them. They crawled through a hole in the ceiling in the men's toilets and made their way along the ceiling to the women's toilets where they viewed a number of victims. So did the cinema people think that they had just like hit the jackpot with these two brothers that wanted to go to every movie. <laughs> yeah, they were big films. These two bucks. just regulars of the cinema. Yeah. They, they ate they so much popcorn. So. <laughs> they lived off of raisinets. Oh. Um, I mean, yeah. if we can be real for just a second, we hung out at the movie theater throughout <laughs> middle school and high school literally Yeah, but we weekend. were dating the entire staff, so we had an excuse. We were dating yeah. the entire staff. We or were leading them on. Tina's. We were literally either actually dating them or pretending we liked them for free movie tickets and popcorn and candy. <laughs> yeah. And so we had a real, a real agenda. Way after he stopped working at the movie theater. So I put my time in, okay? Okay, so what I need you two to do right now is to go onto the shared folder because uh-huh. I've uploaded a picture of the scene sketch of no, the I found situation. It. Oh my god, they use this on the news? The news <laughs> diagram? Has anyone ever watched the, like, um, Leprechaun in Mobile, Alabama video? This is totally like the Leprechaun. This amateur sketch, this was, like, drawn with someone's left hand. It's literally two boxes, three boxes. (laughs) One that says ceiling, one that says women's, and one that says men's, with a woman's hand just pointing at the box that says women's. And the hand is covering, like, a good third of the diagram anyway. It's not good. It's on a clipboard. It's the worst, quote, diagram I've ever seen in my entire (laughs) life. And, like, I can't even draw a stick figure. Duluth's budget was low. (laughs) It's bad so please I love go this. to the blog I'm making this my Facebook cover photo <laughs> right now <laughs> literally <laughs> right now go to the blog and see the worst sketch used on the news of all time no second okay. worst I will say the leprechaun is worse 
I don't know. I think these are like on the same plane. Yeah. The leprechaun's pretty amazing. Okay, anyway. So last thing about these fucking perv brothers. Um, <laughs> the, the way that they were caught is that <laughs> the ceiling couldn't hold their weight. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally like a cartoon. This is amazing. <laughs> and so they fell huh? through and crashed directly into the stalls of the women's restroom. Quote, feeling quite embarrassed. Um. Oh God, yes. <laughs> Were there okay, women I know I said there? I was going to make this my, my cover photo, but I'm actually going to make it my temporary profile picture for a while. <laughs> okay. I love it huge, so much. Huge difference. Okay. <laughs> Did they land on anyone? Were they cur- were they spying on someone at the time? <laughs> Did they, they impale definitely... them with their boners? <laughs> I feel like there was definitely someone in there that they were spying on, so they must have fallen in, like, and been witnessed by someone, but Ouch. that's all I know. That is all I know. Okay, my next case uh, is Eugene Holcomb Buckle. I already hate him. <laughs> I already hate him. <laughs> which, <laughs> which is like, if you're gonna have a peeping Tom name, like, nailed it. Like, yeah, Buckle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Buckle was a, quote, retired, although actually he was forced to resign from the bar. Oh, defrocked! From a defrocked. bar? Defrocked. No, 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 no. The bar, not oh, a bar. Oh, the bar. Okay. That's, yeah. A, yeah. that's less pathetic. Yeah. Kind Both of. Both are great. Okay, so he's a retired uh, personal injury and product liability, liability <laughs> lawyer. So he's oh. basically like a used car salesman of attorneys. Yep. Sure. And he was forced to, you know, be disbarred, basically. Um, he lived, uh, or lives, so I don't know, in, near Lake Oswego, but, in, but in Oregon. Are they just, is Oregon just stealing every fucking name of every, like, Minnesotan thing? And Georgia. And Georgia. It's really bullshit. annoying. And, and Georgia. They're, they're just jealous. And everybody wants Tom's to be like Minnesota. Minnesota and I they're ended up just finding jealous. Them in Oregon and Hate Georgia it. that stole our names. Anyway. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> After that, uh, Buckle was suspected of peeking into the windows and masturbating several times in the weeks before his arrest. He was finally caught after police identified him in several surveillance videos taken by a homeowner. All right. So protecting um, your own shit. Yeah. Actually having a, an actual functioning video camera instead of a fake uh-huh. one. In one of the videos, he is wearing a Cape Cod t-shirt, drinking a beer, and smoking a cigarette. <laughs> wow. Do you have a picture of that? <laughs> no. Oh, my God. Oh. I wish. Bummer. Yeah. But while he's peeping and masturbating, mm. so again, ah. it's like too many things to juggle. No, Is the I t-shirt couldn't. tasseled at the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and airbrushed yeah. Probably with not, the Cape Cod this was part. Like, this was like a few years ago, but I wish. <laughs> yeah, well. Okay, so Buckle pled guilty to one count of felony public indecency because the other counts, uh, plus a charge for resisting arrest, which I feel like there's more to that story, but I couldn't find it, um, were dropped as part of his plea deal. So he only pled guilty to one count of public indecency. So now Buckle faces up to two years in prison, which I feel like it should be more, but whatever. Um, okay, so up until this point, this sounds like a pretty straightforward Peeping Tom case, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there is a twist. <gasps> There's a Shyamalan twist. <laughs> <laughs> They're all dead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bucket is really He's Bruce Willis. A necrophile. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. No, it's not that. Good. Whatever it's... the twist is, will never live up to the twist no. that we just created. <laughs> so. Right. It's a. It's a late canon Shyamalan twist, so it's <laughs> Sorry, really <Bucket>. disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> so, they're aliens. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the shirt was tasseled. <laughs> Wait. Common hail bop. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> okay. So, 
This wine is awful, by the way. That is also a running theme. We're like, we're going to give you wine suggestions and they're all going to be terrible. Whatever. (laughs) My first two were good. (laughs) You're two for four. Two for four. That's 50%. Oh my God, we haven't even gotten to Amanda's segment. Okay. I'm good. Keep going. I'm great. Okay. So, before striking his plea deal, Buckle planned to use a, quote, mental disease or defect defense to beat the charges. Oh, classic. (laughs) So, he blamed late onset psychological and neurological problems for his (laughs) indecent behavior. He blamed late onset diabetes. (laughs) (laughs) Which, that's a joke I'm allowed to make because I'm a type 1 diabetic. If left untreated. Which, if you're my endocrinologist and you're listening to this, I'm really sorry I drink a bottle of wine alone a week. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry about it. Minimum. Don't kid yourself. <laughs> Amanda has mm. like four needles in her arm right now. <laughs> right now. Ready to go. Hanging out Ready of your veins. <laughs> but those don't have insulin in them. Those are fun stuff. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> so Buckle got a forensic psychologist to submit a written testimony reporting that uh, there was evidence that he may have had a stroke that affected part of his brain that controls behavior and inhibition. Bullshit. Okay. I'm rolling my eyes so hard right now that I'm getting sick to my stomach. I know. Yeah. I'm going to Like, bark. dizzy. I feel like sometimes that's Might be the appropriate, wine, but your instincts are so right on this case because... Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. <laughs> this behavior was not fucking new for him. While he was in court for the peeping Tomary that we mentioned, he was Mm -hmm. simultaneously facing a probation violation and had already been convicted for violating a restraining order for stalking an ex-girlfriend. Oh, my God. So there's a pattern here. He's a fucking creep. So he's just a fucking creep throughout his whole fucking life, and he's trying to blame it. He's a lawyer. He's a fucking personal injury lawyer. So he's trying to blame it He's an ambulance chaser. He's not a fucking lawyer. Yeah. I'm picturing picturing Saul Goodman. I am done. That is Eugene Holcomb Buckle. You didn't have a stroke, bud. You're just a fucking creep. Go on. You're a fucking creep. Saul Goodman, you fucking creep. It's all good, man. I'm gonna take over from here. It's all good. Um, <laughs> you're not in good hands. Here we go. <laughs> so, I don't want to say this was the inspiration for this episode because we kind of all came to the conclusion, like, separately that we wanted to do this and then decided that we were gonna do it. But <laughs> several nights ago, I was watching Twilight. Like <laughs> you do. <laughs> Don't admit that publicly. <laughs> Which I'm I fine saw with it. in theaters. Yeah, I saw all of them in theaters, and yeah. I read all the books. All right, oh, you I don't are even both fucking care. Fucking freak. Okay. Love me for me. Anyway, I didn't read the books. There are tears. Go on. Yeah, because she can't read. Anyway, so <laughs> I was watching Twilight, and it for the first time, and maybe because the Peeping Tom's episode was already on our radar. But for the first time ever, and I'm ashamed to say it, I noticed <laughs> that Edward Cullen is a fucking peeping Tom. Mm. Like, 100%, he's creeping into Bella's room and yeah. watching her sleep and playing it off like it's soups romantic that he does that. And I'm like, nah, son, you're a fucking criminal. Get out of my house. This but is not the, most dis- not the most disturbing part of this trilogy, by the way. No, not even <laughs> close. But anyway... First order of business, Edward Cullen from Twilight, you're a peeping Tom. I know you're not real, but I'm speaking directly to you. You're a peeping Tom. Okay. Hashtag, hashtag Edward, hashtag Kristen Stewart awoke something in me on SNL. Go on. Oh, oh my God. So good. Ditto. A deep, deep, oh my God. deep curiosity <laughs> for women's parts. Oh my God. That Totino's ad, I was like... Oh. Trying to like, mess I had to watch it alone in the bathtub. <laughs> it was, real and I hot. did. I did do that. I did that. I. Did I know that. my boss is listening right now. I don't care. I didn't do it at work, but I did do that. Oh my god. Anyway. 
Anyway, <laughs> I might cut that. You guys my boss keep... really does listen. Continue. Don't edit this out. Okay. <laughs> I'll do my best. So anyway, that was just a little aside. Anyway, my just, first thing. <laughs> Did you spill, or did you wet, or both? <laughs> Don't blame spill. that wet spot on your pants on your wine. <laughs> you were thinking about that Totino's commercial again. <laughs> that also happened, but simultaneously I spilled half a glass of wine down my shirt. <laughs> but seriously, Kristen Stewart on SNL. Ladies, if you haven't watched it yet. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Anyway, so because fucking patriarchy. Yep. And we're going to circle back to some of the conversations we've had earlier in this episode about the blurred lines, pun intended, and by mm. pun I mean reference intended. <laughs> I'm drunk. Um, in the realm of peeping Tomery and voyeurism. Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> this is an article I found during my research, and I was disgusted by it, and I will preface it by saying the follow-up has been zero in terms of law. So, the article literally starts with, <clears throat> women across Georgia may want to reconsider wearing a dress or a skirt, period. Gosh. God damn it. All I right. hate everything about this already. Kristen Stewart, George come where are you? <laughs> yeah, we need Save you. Us. You're Save the hero us. we need. <laughs> Georgia's Court of Appeals just ruled taking a photo up a skirt in public does not count as an invasion of privacy. Okay. okay. This article was published right. in 2016. Fucking Christ. The theory is you are giving up some of your rights to privacy by wearing that skirt in public that you would otherwise have if you were behind closed doors, like we discussed earlier. Are they um, fucking kidding? Hashtag nope. gravity? Nope. They're uh, not fucking kidding. A woman in this article talks about how she has her daughters wear shorts under all of their skirts, just in case, uh, to protect them. Um, there's like something a really about how common trend for like little girls, and it's so well, yeah, because they're doing cartwheels and yeah. being normal. I fucking refuse to wear underwear. In fact, there's a great story. <laughs> there's a great story. My sister and I are five years apart, so really the only time we ever went to school together was when we were in elementary school. So she was in like fifth grade, and I was in I don't know fucking like kindergarten. And she would walk me to school, and I hated underwear. Still do, not wearing it now, moving on. <laughs> hated it. My, my mother would put it on me in the morning. Somewhere in my walk to school, unbeknownst to my sister, I would take it, slip it off, like shimmy it off, and abandon it on the side of the, si of the road, You wouldn't basically. even take it with you? No, I you ditched pick, it. So on the way home one home. day. So many, like, confused sheriffs. Right now, no. being like, we found the underwear of an eight-year-old girl on the side of the road, well, and we are I mean, concerned. I don't, I don't know how much was found, because here's the end of the story. We'd be walking back home from school, yep. oh, and there was one day where I'm walking with her, and I look at it, and I had clearly forgotten that I had <laughs> taken it off on the way to school, <laughs> because I'm distracted by literally fucking everything. And I look at it, and I was like, oh my god, that's the same underwear that I have. <laughs> and my sister looks down and is mortified, like goes ghostly white, and is like, girl, that is your underwear, that is so <laughs> gross, pick that shit up. And I was like, oh yeah, I took it off on the way to school, ha. <laughs> and she fucking immediately tattled on me, because she was obviously jealous. Because and my mother would have about that life. No, no, she's not. My mom would have to do, like, a panty check to make sure I'd put my underwear on. <laughs> there were complaints in the neighborhood among my neighbors being like, there's that naked girl playing in the creek again. <laughs> we literally had, Amanda. like, a crick. I'm just so not surprised. Okay, I don't so know, voyeurism. In anyway. Your, in your defense, though, was it that scratchy, like, Barbie underwear that had, like, the glitter I, on it? Because I girl, feel that this shit, shit off have been, immediately no, also. no. No, this could have been smooth as silk, the best goddamn underwear in the world. I still would have ditched it on the way to school because I'm my grandmother's grandchild. <laughs> Party grandma taught me that underwear is restricting and I shouldn't fucking wear it. And you know what? 
best lesson I ever learned. Yeah, the the um, party grandma also told me on my graduation day, she opened up my robe and pointed at my boobs and said, don't ever let those go down. Boobs will get you anywhere. <laughs> She's from Boston. She takes a lot of pills. And you know what? She's right, because those titties got me out of a late fee at Blockbuster at least twice. Oh, and one that, speeding sorry. ticket. Never let that go. <laughs> so, the point of me bringing this up is, I don't know, I, it's, this is like such a fucking obvious male lawmakers are in control here. Yeah. So, enough, enough women were uh, obviously fucking outraged about this ruling that they basically filed an appeal to this court, and um, they were supposed to have made progress on rewording this law or, I don't know, adding more language, changing it, scrapping it completely and starting from scratch, I don't know. I did a bunch of research trying to find something in 2017 because when this law was basically outed, they were like, well, there's nothing we can do about it for six months, and then we can basically, like, file an appeal, and we can change what? it, and blah, blah, blah. All right. And there has been zero fucking follow-up. None. Like, the state of Georgia has not done shit. Their court of appeals has not done shit to change the wording of this law. God damn it. So, so where we're at right now is it's everything is business as usual. You are taking the risk by wearing a skirt out in public of allowing yourself, by choosing to wear a skirt to be fucking upskirted by any perv that walks by, and that perv can be defended in court and not be prosecuted at all because the law allows for that to fucking happen. So uh, using this uh, logic, using this logic, could it be fair to demand that all guys wear a nut cup in public just in case I want to fucking punch their nuts off? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I like sure, kind of they're, they're, they're exposing court. themselves. You defend you defend your own body against other people's actions. So it's not their fault, it's your fault for not defending yourself against their actions. Mm -hmm. That's the same fucking thing. It's fucking mm -hmm. ridiculous. God damn it. Yeah. Well then nobody I'm else is Oh my god, I just poured wine <laughs> all over this bed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. Okay, in a pool of wine, I will continue. <laughs> so I have Two gross dudes. <laughs> One sort of local. He's from the Washtenaw County of Michigan. Mm. Midwestern oh. boy. Midwest boy. Mm. Yep. And this gentleman was arrested. He's 45 years old. He was arrested in connection to a portable toilet peeping incident. <laughs> what? I love this yep. already. Oh. Portable. Uh, quote. Portable toilet peeping incident. Another great band name, in my opinion. <laughs> I like it. Nothing I like it. worse yep. than peeping so, in a portable um, toilet. Mm -hmm. So this, this <laughs> incident happened at Wired's Orchard, so like a family destination, Jesus. on <laughs> October 10th, 2015. Ugh. There was a race scheduled, and portable toilets were brought in for about 24 hours. I'm assuming... The race was like horses. I don't fucking know. I'm too drunk to Or like a marathon. Guinea yeah, sacks. Sure. Like a 5K. A woman? Sure, sure. But anyone who runs is a monster. So let's just assume it was horses. <laughs> a woman at this event spotted a camera in the bowl of the porta potty. Uh, oh my uh, god. There's uh, no yes, bowl. Quinn. Uh, he planted a camera uh, and uh, deputies were called right away. By bowl, uh, do you mean the yeah. black chasm underneath yep. the seat? Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Director of Community uh, Engagement Derek Jackson says, quote, It was definitely aimed to try and get pictures of people. Yeah. Not duh. No fucking duh, uh, Derek Jackson. Are you kidding me? Derek fucking Jackson? God damn it. C crack police work. <laughs> the camera was definitely there and on and in a toilet bowl to get pictures of people. I, I'm actually, I can't stop gagging. Okay. Well, here's the best part, because if you make your way over to the blog, <laughs> the sheriff's office released pictures of the suspected peeper 
captured by his own camera that he allegedly planted. No. So it's just like a bunch no. of really bad selfies of this no. 45-year-old man being like, is this thing on? And trying to get it into a toilet. <laughs> is, is this thing on? Is it on? Are you so, on? I mean, testing. Is this on? So please go to the blog, check out this fucking creep. He stuck a goddamn camera into a porta potty toilet, raped the rewards. He is I, in jail. Oh my god. So right. camera, um, like video camera, or like mm, was set I believe to video camera. Still images. Okay. Video camera. There's another toilet person. <laughs> always. There's always <laughs> another toilet person. Well, because I number was just like. Three. We're on number three, <laughs> toilet person. This is like the easiest way to do it, but this one, this, this is one of the best stories I've ever heard. <laughs> like, really. It's like the Velveteen Rabbit, Good Night Moon, this guy. <laughs> Madeline. Okay. <laughs> Madeline. Here we go. Okay. So we are in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, naturally, where the peeping I'm, yeah. all, know I'm already do. repulsed. Yeah, no, nothing, not, not very many good things happen in Oklahoma. So, the Tulsa County Sheriff's deputies are called to Whitewater Park Women's Bathroom uh-huh. by a park ranger. Uh huh. Um, this park is on the southeast side of the Keystone Dam and it has toilet facilities that are a little bit rudimentary. So, it's essentially a series of holes over a giant septic tank that is under a cement slab. Yeah. I lived in China. A plastic... I, um, yeah. I you know what's up. I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> a plastic toilet seat sets over the hole that allows access for septic service, and that's, like, you can get a visual of what that would be like. It's mm-hmm. a trough. <laughs> Deputy Brian Osmond <laughs> says in his arrest report <laughs> that he saw... This gentleman, with the last name Enlo, mm. standing in the septic tank. In? What? In. Like the poopy He's part? in the tank. <laughs> He's in the tank uh, under the holes uh, that you poop through. His the whole, poopy part. His whole body Quote, is in there? His whole... He's hiding in the tank. <laughs> oh. Quote, I saw that he was standing with his head and shoulders out of a hole uh. and that he was covered in feces. <laughs> uh, uh, oh so God. Keystone Fire and Rescue help him climb out of the toilet and <clears throat> use a fire hose to clean him off. <laughs> they Ooh, blasted him with a powerful. fire hose. There's those a are powerful. Obviously shame, they're like, and then there's a fire hose of shame. Yeah. Oh. And it's obviously Kyle they're like, Green. bro, what the fuck are you doing in this toilet? And here's his story. First, he tells authorities that his girlfriend, Angel, <laughs> hit him in the head with a tire iron and dumped him in the toilet. Okay, all right. He said, it, he said Angel drove him to the dam in her blue and white 1972 Chevy Monte Carlo okay. and left him in the hole about 30 minutes before he was found. Way too specific. You're overdoing the lie. Really going too far. Angel he couldn't claims... have been driving a Prius, bruh. <laughs> like what? I mean, bruh. it's a classic car, 72 Chevy Monte Carlo. So, I have he a claims, question about the poop level. Like, the poop. I don't was know how to answer up that. up to his shoulders in poop? He was, quote, covered in feces. That's all you know? That's all I know. Okay. I guess I'll have to settle. Use your imagination. They had to fire hose him off. He was covered in so much shit. It required I mean, a fire hose. Even, like, a few cups of shit would require... A fire hose? No. Okay. No. All right. Normal shower. All right. Been there. Done okay. that. I'll Google Normal it shower. myself. It's All right. fine. All right. Anyway, <laughs> he claims that he was unconscious from that injury, Angel hitting him in the head with a tire iron, mm-hmm. and that's why he didn't call for help right away when someone entered the bathroom and found him in there. Yeah. Okay. The deputy. The deputy says... This guy did not have any fresh injuries that backed up the story of being attacked with a tire iron. Shocker. He did have He did have some old scratches on his head, but they were scabbed over. 
So clearly he was not hitting the head. So he's getting a bunch of feces in his fresh wounds. Uh, just wait. So oh, maybe also, he's been there for like a week and a half. We'll oh, never no. know. Oh. No, because he also had some scratches, some fresh scratches on his arms that deputies deduced were from the rough edges of the concrete slab under the toilet. <laughs> Uh, so he had fresh uh, injuries from climbing into the septic tank to look up <laughs> through the hole and watch people shit and piss on him. Oh, oh my oh god. My well, this god. is a so real deputies, fetish, though, isn't it? Like, people I poop mean, this on combines, a piece of plastic. This combines peeping, scat, Trump. and golden showers. It's all of the good stuff. <laughs> so deputies took this guy to a local hospital where medical personnel confirmed that there were no injuries consistent with being struck in the face or head. Shocker. So he, he debunked his own theory. <laughs> he was then taken to Tulsa County Jail where he was booked on te- a peeping Tom complaint and, obviously, on an outstanding warrant or warrants because it's multiple, it's plural in this in this. <laughs> article <laughs> and the in warrants were for storm. yeah in this literal <laughs> shitstorm the warrants are for embezzlement by trustee and hey. dumping trash on public or private property who's Wrong the trustee yeah two insane opposite ends of the str- of the spectrum embezzlement by trustee and dumping trash on public or private property what? I'm so bewildered by these charges. Is yep. there any explanation? He No, none. And he also has arrest records in Creek and Tulsa counties for public intoxication and driving under suspension. Weird. Nothing on peeping toms, no weird sex crimes, but definitely embezzlement, wrongful dumping, and driving drunk. <laughs> wrongful dumping. <laughs> <laughs> wrongful dumping. <laughs> wrongful dumping and wrongful observation of dumping. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, this guy sat in a septic tank peering up through a hole to watch, I don't know, the expansion and contraction of a butthole that was releasing... First of all... I mean, I'm sure First most all, were pee. That is fucking oh, dedication. Foul. Second of all, uh, oh. ki- the light couldn't have even been that good. So, like, the no. the quality of the light and the visual... Well, and the fucked up part is that he was found in this septic tank by a woman and her seven-year-old daughter. Oh, no. And they're like, what's that man yep. down there? Oh yeah, so they were probably, How like, getting... even imagine no. being no. in one of these toilets and then noticing someone's fucking face? I would... Lose my shit. Lose I, it. It'd I be will over. be checking every fucking porta potty oh, yeah. for the rest of my days. I mean, I check I every poop. Now I'm checking were every the empty only pot. Safe public toilets. No, I was like, there's a camera in there. I was like paranoid about every there's other a camera public in there. toilet, but not porta potties. Why no. would you think that porta potties would be more safe? Yeah, cute because Kenyan. They're really gross. I don't know. I just. I don't know. Oh, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> sure. Right. My bad. I'm at fault. All right. Anyway, that's that's all I have because I got too deep into <laughs> concerns about my search history to, like, go much farther into peeping toms. Oh, I mean, fair. I'm going to die fair. some sort of weird death, and I, right now my search history is literally peeping toms, necrophiliacs, cults. <laughs> Uh, it's you, not good. And then a bunch real of wine. Deep. You've gone real deep and we all appreciate it. Yeah. A lot of fucking total wine orders for pickup. <laughs> a lot. So many receipts. So many. On the grid. All right. Are we ready for special thanks this week? No, well, the joke. Well, first I want to wrap this the up joke. with a joke because we missed our joke last week and I found this one and I really like it. Okay. <clears throat> What is the difference between a pickpocket and a peeping Tom? Oh, God. What? One results in hard cash? No. You're supposed to say, I don't know. Oh, I I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) A pickpocket snatches watches. (laughs) Oh, my God. Get it? Instead of watches snatches? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. (laughs) 
Oh, oh, this, is so good. this is my favorite joke of all time. <laughs> it's Finish not it. good. Finish it. <laughs> that was it. You're supposed to infer the rest, and it's brilliant, and I love it, and don't cut it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Why would I cut that? I love that joke. It's so good. Right. A pickpocket oh snatches so watches. Watches snatches. I love it. LOL. I love it. It's so good. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Um, I've spilled a lot of wine. Okay. Special thanks this week. Big thanks and shout out to three fellow female-driven podcasts. Hell yeah. Woo! 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 36 times the shit show. Uh, yes! We love those Canadian bitches! Love it! <laughs> the shit show and... Yes! <laughs> Our soul sisters, Geek End Amazons. Yeah, you girls. Go girls. Love you, girls. Okay, so Holla. the shit show has a little bit of something for everyone. Geek End Amazons is for mad, woke, intersexual feminists who love Fuck, yes. to also Netflix and chill. So basically, us. And yep. mm-hmm. If you dig listening to true crime stories with ridiculous northern accents, then you also Dude. have to check out 36 Times Podcast. Absolutely. Did you did you figure out the origin of their name? Because it's no. fucking cool. I don't so know. So the know origin of their it. name, it's posted, so it's allowed for me to talk about this. Okay. The origin of their name, 36 Times, mm. comes from the statistic that you are likely to walk past a murderer at least 36 times in your lifetime without knowing oh, that you've done it. Oh, my God. Uh, Isn't that like cool? That. I love Didn't it. Know. I fucking love it. Oh. I love it. That yeah, makes so my nice everyday life so much more work. interesting. I know. Now every 36th person, I'm like, you don't kill somebody. Oh, my oh God. My God. I, I, was, I thought I was suspicious before, and now I'm like, 18 times more suspicious. <laughs> no, it'll make it worse. It's going to make it worse. Yeah, for sure. All right. Cool. Okay, so we those, love you guys. those three podcasts, we love you. You've given us so much love out there in the Twitterverse, and we thank you for it. All right. Cool. Uh, also, we're on iTunes now, so that's pretty fucking awesome. We're fucking yep. on iTunes, so go we're rate, pumped. review, subscribe. Get it. Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kali Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Sound mixing by Dan Larson. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at wineandcrimepod. If you have wine recommendations or creepy true crime stories to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. All Wine and Crime episodes are available on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play, plus a number of other podcasting apps. If we're not on your preferred app yet, let us know and we'll work to make sure you get your Wine and Crime fix ASAP. Most importantly, if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. It really is the best way to spread the word. Support for Wine and Crime comes from... Us. At the moment, we're footing most of the bill, but we ain't too proud to beg, so we're also on Patreon. If you'd like to support us and get a shout-out on air, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Mm -hmm.